Hello everyone and welcome to this series of videos on the Deep Blue against Gary Kasparov matches. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are up to the 1996 match Game 4 in which Gary Kasparov was white and Deep Blue was black with the score poised at one and a half each. Let's have a look how it went. It was a very, very interesting game. So um, knight f3, d5, d4. And uh, in the 1996 match, Gary was um, was still really um, uh, playing mainline openings, but with move order tweaks to try and catch uh, catch out deep blue from uh, from its opening book. Um, actually, um, yeah, in game two, which we saw earlier, deep blue. Uh, something had gone wrong with uh, with entering Deep Blue's uh, actual opening book. And instead of playing the um, uh, the semi Slav, it played the um, well. We ended up in a Catalan, in actual fact. But here, the opening book was uh, was ready, so Deep Blue went for uh, for this system. Um, Kasparov didn't uh, go for the uh, very sharpest line, which is Knight C3. When I don't know what uh, Deep Blue would have played. D takes C4, the Notabone. You never know. Um, he played the move knight bd2, which he's played a reasonable amount, especially in simuls, actually. Um, it's uh, The idea of knight bd2 is that you protect the pawn on c4. So if d takes c4, you can just take back with a knight straight away. Um, the, but the knight on d2 is still um, helping white, you know, prepare e4, either in one move or after e3 and bishop d3. Um, but it just prevents black from, uh, from any of those sharp lines where you take on c4 and then try and hang on to the pawn. Um, so what we actually ended up in was um, uh, kind of um, an old-fashioned sideline of the um, of the uh, of the main semi-slav because knight f6 happened, e3, knight bd7, bishop d3, and now bishop d6. And I don't know whether this was um, uh, the deep blues team in intention um, uh, if White had played the knight to c3, but uh, in any case, after bishop d6, Gary played uh, e4. And, um, well, there's no difference of whether the knight has come from d2 to take on e4 or whether it's come from c3 to take on e4. We're back into um, um, quite a, uh, an old-fashioned main line. But uh, you know, Gary has played this a uh, fair amount. There's a pretty famous game of his against um, uh, Hubner um, at uh, Aura, 1987, 1988, something like that. Um, 1986, even. Um, so, uh, you know, Gary has had a fair amount of experience with it, but it's not so bad for, uh, for black at all. So castles, castles, and now this cautious move h6. Black wants to, um, uh, to play e5, but you've got to watch out because uh, if you do it immediately, there's this little trick, takes and queen h5 check, followed by queen takes e5. So um, um, h6 is played to uh, well to deal with that threat and also to uh, you know to cover any possible ideas like knight g5. Um, so bishop c2 played by um, by Gary and now e5. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities in uh, in this position. Um, at, at one stage, um, one favoured line was to play uh, queen d3 from white, f5, and then to play c5. Lots of uh, sharpness there. Gary goes for um, a more restrained line. Just played the move uh, rook e1. And uh, here, deep blue took on d4. Um, actually, uh, one idea that the, uh, that the engines were quite interested in here uh, was to play the move bishop b4, first of all. And after rook e2, then to take on d4. The idea being is that, uh, you know, after e takes d4, queen takes d4, of course, the bishop on, uh, on d6 is, uh, is hanging here. Um, here you just get it out of the way with bishop b4 first. And, um, well, a3, bishop a5, queen d3, knight f6. Um, yeah, this is what the engines were thinking. And, uh, well, they were making uh, draws. But that's pretty, you know, they were making draws uh, for a very long time in uh, in this game as well. So, uh, uh, basically, you know, the, the, the opening's a little bit better for white, but nothing too uh, horrific for black. Um, but e takes d4 is a very reasonable move and uh, here it gets a little bit confusing because, um, well, just um, in uh, deep thinking, Gary says that uh, he pondered a peace sacrifice against deep blue's kingside on move 13, which is this move, uh, before deciding it was too risky. It's notable, however, that I would have played it against any other chess playing entity on the planet, man or machine. Uh, brave words, but I don't understand where the peace sacrifice is coming from. Uh, the only peace sacrifice I can think of is bishop takes h6, but I, I can't imagine that uh, 
that Gary would have played this against uh, Karpov, for example. Um, yeah, it's just nothing at all. Um, if rookie four, for example, we just go f5 and we cover it in that way. Um, if you go uh, something like queen d3, I'll just go uh, um, f5 as well, for example. Queen takes d4, queen f6. So, yeah, I don't really understand what what this could be. Um, but as you'll see, there's there's a lot of confusion about this uh, this p sacrifice somehow. But Gary played queen d4, which is quite normal. Bishop c5 and queen c3. Yeah, queen f4 is another idea for white. Just keep the queen some somehow looking towards the king side, and maybe we'll aim for uh, b3, bishop b2, or even bishop d2 to c3, something like that. Um, actually, um, um, knight f6, h3, rook e8, takes takes, and now b4 was uh, um, was a line that um, uh, that the uh, the engines were were looking at, and then not even taking the pawn, but refusing and looking to uh, to try and exchange off queens. You know, you just get you know this sort of position all the time, really. A3, White's got a little bit of something extra here in uh, in this position, some sort of. Uh, um, threatening looking attacking chances against the uh, the king's side but in principle black's very solid and uh, yeah you know with some good sensible play should be holding a draw um, but Gary played queen c3 which is also very natural um, just um, um, maybe looking for uh, for b4 at some stage and also you know freeing the bishop and uh, and rooks to come out like that you know black's still got to be a little bit careful here so a5, and here um, Feng Shun Shu says in uh, Behind Deep Blue on move 15, Gary had the chance to make a spectac speculative sacrifice but decided against it. After the match, Gary visited IBM Research and analysed position with Deep Blue. Deep Blue assessed the sacrifice as sound, but there was no clear win for him. Um, and again, he repeats this thing. Uh, Gary uh, said that he would have played the sacrifice against any other opponent, human or electronic. Um, but again, I, I don't understand move 15... The only sacrifice I can think of is bishop h6, but again, takes rook e4, f5, followed by queen f6, and we're dealing with everything. I think that Gary, I think that they're talking about move 16 in actual fact. That's all I can really think of. So um, Gary played um, a3 to stop uh, bishop b4 here. Um, just in case you're, you're wondering, uh, you could still try bishop b4 because after takes we've got this uh, discovered attack here, which would be quite cunning. But queen d3 threatens mate, so it deals with that threat and then afterwards rook a8 will, uh, will happen. So, um, um, yeah, here um, black's got a couple of possibilities. The engines were looking at, uh, at playing a4 just to, uh, well, to make a queenside game before um, uh, going further with development. But Deep Blue played uh, the move knight f6 here. And here, I think, this is what Gary was probably talking about and what uh, Feng Chung Shu was, was talking about. Um, here, Gary could have played the move bishop takes h6. Um, now, the point is that after g takes h6, rook d1, bishop d7, um, um, I'm guessing that this is wh where um, uh, nobody could find uh, um, a win for uh, for white. But uh, actually, modern engines just say easy, easy for white. Uh, but you'll uh, you'll maybe not guess the move that they think is is the best. Simply h3 uh, in this position. And uh, the idea simply is that uh, the engines just think that black is completely powerless. Um, I mean, we've got ideas like knight e5 coming in, like queen e5 uh, coming around to g3 f4. Um, and if you go something like rook e8, uh, they just wanted to take, take, and go knight e5 in this position. Um, queen h4 to get out of the pin, knight d7, bishop f2, king h1. And um, yeah, the engines considered this position to be very, very strong indeed for, uh, for white. If queen g3 trying to swap off, you just uh, chase back, go c5, and then you're also looking for bishop b3, rook f3, f7 is hanging. Yeah, this knight can't really move because we've got knight f6. Um, as always, you know, um, 2.07, you sort of think, really? But it definitely does look pretty good for uh, for white there. So um, so that, uh, h3, what a move. Simply h3 and, uh, and black is powerless, 2.07 according to the engines. But um, what black does have is this idea, bishop takes f2. But I would have thought that if Gary had seen that this was kind of forced, then... Uh, you definitely would have wanted to play it because, well, what black does is get the piece back without damaging the um, uh, its king side. 
But of course, yeah, the, the, this piece is not particularly great. And, um, well, you know, White's got a, a number of nice ideas here. For example, well, Rook D1 is possible. Or C5 was what the engines were looking at. Bishop G4, um, Knight D4. And, um, well, you know, you can line up, uh, double up uh, the Rooks. You can play H3, have Queen D3 at some stage. Uh, the engines were still making a draw. You know, both uh, Stockfish and Dragon with Black were, were able to make a draw from here. But it's a little bit unpleasant. This knight is really uh, quite out of uh, out of play. Wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be my my favourite idea for Black. That's why the engines were were looking to play a four. Actually, um, they were looking uh, after Bishop d two, Knight f six. Then they were looking at Bishop h six. But um, you know, the key point is you get pretty much the same position as uh, as before. But um, at least you've managed to get an a four and tie down the uh, the white queen side. But uh, this was how the position was going. Rook e five, Bishop g four, takes takes, Queen d six, c five, Queen f six, and uh, yeah, this is Dragon against Stockfish. And, uh, yeah, you know, the engines thought that uh, the black should sort of uh, hold. Although, you know, I'd much rather be white. I mean, after all, this, this pawn is also a target here as well. And uh, this knight is still way out of play. So, um, yeah, you know, actually, I, I quite like this for, uh, for, uh, for white. I could definitely think this would be a decent uh, thing to play in a human game. After knight f6, Gary played bishop e3. I think he's still following uh, normal theory here in actual fact. Takes, takes. And um, uh, we're actually following a really old game here. This is Ryshevsky against Bisguay, uh, 1955, New York. And um, in that game, black played the very sensible rook e8, um, rook d1, uh, bishop d7, uh, knight e5, queen c7. Rookie one bishop b six, which is quite similar to what uh, to what we ended up with uh, in Gary's game. Rook f three, king f eight, h three, rook d eight, rook e three, king g eight, and uh, rook e two, bishop c eight. And Black held the uh, the draw quite nicely. Bisguay, interesting player, and also played the um, the Berlin as Black. Um, he had a good feel for uh, for solid uh, solid opening somehow. It seems. Um, so. Um, um, but what D Blue played was uh, was Bishop G4, um, also you know pretty uh, pretty reasonable. But Rook E8 maybe a little bit more natural. Knight E5 and Rook E8. So not worrying at all about uh, giving up the um, uh, the Bishop for the uh, Knight, and that's actually quite a uh, quite an interesting little um, little little point there because um, you know um, in the 1997 match. Uh, Gary, you know, sort of decided to test out Deep Blue um, in the opening um, um, in the opening uh, games, and um, uh, with the moves that Deep Blue played, um, he concluded that Deep Blue preferred um, bishops to knights, and he sort of based uh, you know part of his uh, match strategy along that. Um, now we'll have a look at, uh, at why Gary thought that and why he don't think he was correct at all but um but it's interesting that in the 1996 match you would have thought also that this moment might have uh, you know triggered a bell somehow because uh, you know if if uh, d blue was not at all keen about swapping off uh, bishops for knights then um it wouldn't have played a move like bishop g4 and it wouldn't have allowed you to uh, to take on g4 like that i think but uh interesting moment anyway so um rookie eight Rook e1 played, and now bishop e6 played. That's also uh, Stockfish's choice and uh, and quite natural. Yeah, obviously, uh, knight takes g4 was threatened, so you had to do something about that bishop now. And here Gary played the move um, f4, uh, looking to play f5. Principle um, uh, looking quite promising for uh, for white. Of course, you know the the pawn structure is uh, is balanced. You know three and three, um, which uh, you know sort of makes um, uh, it gives some indications of uh, of possibilities for a draw. Um, but on the other hand, you know white's got better mobility. I mean the rooks are developed and blacks uh, certainly rook on a8, queen on d8, still on the starting square. White's got more space. Bishop active. You know it feels like this should be an appreciable uh, advantage for white, but. Deep Blue played very, very well from here. The engines, again, are not amazingly keen for white. They were looking at playing uh, not f4, but g4, funnily enough. Um, and, um, um, and after knight d7, playing h3. And just, uh, you know, claiming, uh, going for this sort of uh, space advantage. Just, uh, you know, restricting the bishop with these pawns. But yeah, I don't know. It wasn't um, wasn't you know anything in particular really. And uh, yeah, Black still threatening to do what uh, D Blue did in the game with B5, Rook D1, Queen C7, Queen D3, G6. 
you know, you're shuffling around really, but uh, basically the engines sort of feel that this is this is basically pretty fine for um, for uh, for black. Uh, they'll manage to uh, to hold the draw somehow. So um, um, what uh, Gary did was play the move uh, f4, and here uh, deep blue played queen c8. Um, b5 um, was possible. Uh, that also was what uh, deep blue did a little bit later in the game. But queen c8 was uh, quite reasonable, just stopping uh, f4 to f5 there. And after h3, deep blue played uh, b5. It's one of those examples I talked uh, talked about earlier that uh, you know often. Uh, Deep Blue doesn't play the move that the engines really wanted, but when you put it on the board, the engines say, well, yeah, fine too. You know, so uh, so that was it. And um, B5 and now F5. And then one of those moments that, uh, you know, later sort of led to, uh, was, was used, uh, you know, as an extra bit of controversy, really, because um, uh, Feng Chung Shu describes in um, uh, Behind Deep Blue, uh, he says, when I got back to my table, my computer screen had entered into a blank screensaver mode. I typed in Gary's F5 and Deep Blue crashed. The screensaver mode interpreted the F as a wake-up character, so just the F to wake up the screen, and Deep Blue received a 5 instead of the full move F5. Joe, that's uh, um, one of the main guys behind the, uh, the, uh, the parallel um, uh, processing uh, part of, uh, of Deep Blue, um, had been working on the Deep Blue Parallel Chess program and had added some testing commands to the program to help him with his work. And five was uh, something like a reboot command. So, um, so there we are, uh, F5. And um, well, the point, uh, the reason why um, um, you know Gary was a little bit upset was that you know this was kind of a crucial uh, point in the game. Uh, he felt that um, you know there was a bishop f5 when he planned uh, a big sacrifice knight takes f7 and there was the move bishop takes c4 which was um, kind of safer and uh, which deep blue eventually played and uh, yeah you know um, it was uh, uh, yeah you know obviously gary felt that uh, maybe the, the computer restarting had uh, maybe helped somehow you know it's uh, but uh, yeah you know it's uh, there's a lot of these moments in the matches where the uh, yeah where somehow um, uh, yeah, Deep Blue crashes and has to uh, to restart. You see it in the 1997 logs as well. Happens a number of times. Uh, I think you know from that point of view, this was you know pretty experimental. It was really cutting edge. When Deep Blue came out of the uh, of the lab, it was it wasn't a you know it wasn't like a, a fully made pro uh, product. It was still um, yeah pretty much work in progress. So uh, crashes and all that that uh, you know that was part and parcel of it. Actually, uh, um, in the AlphaGo movie. Um, just before the first move um, um, between uh, AlphaGo and Lee Sedol, uh, one of the world's greatest uh, Go players, in that match that uh, the Deep Minded in um, back in 2000, 2018, 17, 16. Well, forgotten there but um yeah one of the engineers is uh, is sort of talking about you know we've we've spent months preparing for this we've tested and tested and tested but until AlphaGo makes it first move you don't know whether it's all gone right or not you know and uh, and the, the funny thing was that AlphaGo always took between a minute and a minute and 15 seconds to play its moves and um uh yeah so lisa doll made his first move and then you just had to wait for a minute you know for for a move to appear and everyone's waiting everyone's wondering has it has it crashed really so yeah it's uh yeah reading what uh, feng shung shu wrote about all this stuff you know uh it, yeah uh, as an it guy myself it sort of came uh yeah really uh, struck a chord somehow um, but yeah, bishop c4 had to be played, bishop f5. Um, um, actually, in, in behind deep blue, they say that, uh, yeah, sometimes um, uh, deep blue, um, uh, yeah, the 1996 deep blue, the one that played here, preferred bishop c4 over bishop f5. The 1997 version of deep blue preferred bishop f5. Um, in actual fact, it's basically uh, uh, a draw as well, although it would have been a lot more thrilling. So Gary was intending knight f7. Um, quite a shocking uh, sacrifice. Uh, maybe the first thing you think is, well, you know, the white pieces don't look that close to the black king. So what's the what's the point? But actually, the point is a very simple win of material. You just want to take and take here. And after queen f5, you've got rook f1. Uh, these are the sort of little tactics you can miss uh, as a human player sometimes because the um, the refutation is slightly less dramatic than the initial first move. You know, knight f7 looks like, oh my goodness, he's ripping apart the king side. But the uh, you know the main line is just to win material. But actually, Black's got a couple of ways to to draw this, uh, as the engine shows. So, and uh, I think as Deep Blue showed as well. So Rook E3, 
Knight takes h6, takes rook e3. Um, and the reason this is just a little bit tricky to find is that, um, yeah, knight h5, that's a bit of a tough move to see. Uh, covering g3 here, stopping rook g3, but looking pretty exposed. But yeah, queen e5 takes, queen c2, and now there's loads of moves. Queen d7 is one idea. Queen f8 also draws, according to uh, Stockfish. Queen c7 also. But let's have a look at queen d7, queen h6, queen d4. And um, yeah, the point about this is that the uh, the queen and the bishop are sort of covering um, um, covering everything very effectively. So after king h1, you can even just grab the pawn, queen g5. I can go queen h8, for example, uh, king h8, and there's no way that you're going to uh, to mate me here. Just uh, these pieces just covering everything. Pretty impressive, really, I have to say. Um, what you've also got, yeah, even b4, distracting the black queen would be fine. And the uh, bishop takes c2 is another idea. Knight h6, king h8. Queen takes, 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 and gh. Queen c3, queen d8, rook e6, king g7. And uh, yeah, again, you know, the engine sort of thought that this was going to end up as a draw. This was, uh, I think this was the draw by Perpetual, wasn't it? Queen e3, check, king e6, queen e3, king f5. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff that uh, white can try, but nothing leading to um, uh, to a win there. So um, yeah, that would have just been a draw as well. Um, actually, I think from a practical point of view for uh, um, for Deep Blue, this was quite a good uh, choice because it kept the um, uh, kept the game uh, together. And um, yeah, seeing um, seeing these um, these positions with a white pawn on f5 reminded me of um, uh, of a comment that uh, Vichy Anand once made to me when I was playing black against Joel Lutje. Um, um, I think it was in Tilburg 1997 and we reached some sort of uh, a Nidorf, it was from a Nidorf we reached some position with a pawn in f5 and uh, he said oh yeah these positions are very bad for white with a pawn in f5 like that you know uh, the pawn blocks uh, any nice white pieces you know there's no bishop that's attacking uh, h7 anymore there's no knight that can come into f5 and uh, having the f pawn missing weakens the, uh, the king and um, well you know um, uh, it's a bit excessive to say that um, the black is better in this position, but you see that Gary is really struggling to um, to keep his position together. He's not quite sure what he wants to do with white. Uh, doesn't have any any natural kingside attacks with this pawn there, five blocking everything. And yeah, the king is just a little bit weak, and there's little weak points all over the place. It's um, um, you know Gary got short of time uh, from here, and uh, yeah, uh, in, D in behind deep blue, uh, Feng Chung Shu describes. You know how Gary's hand was shaking as he was making the moves. He was really, really tense. It's a really big strain. Um, but somehow, uh, Deep Blue, yeah, I, I guess, you know, not just like, you know, modern engines nowadays, not necessarily naturally programmed to make things uh, the most difficult for a human player. And uh, yeah, maybe if you, uh, if you could uh, have done this, uh, then Deep Blue might well have won this game. Um, but as it is, um, what happened is that Deep Blue kind of uh, allowed uh, Gary to. Uh, um, to swap off all the queenside pawns. Uh, you'll see what happened. So rook d8 played, king h1. Uh, Gary had um, uh, 21 minutes for nine moves. And um, yeah, he didn't like this move, king h1. Engines are not too bothered either way. They just think that this is equal. But yeah, obviously uh, there's quite a bit of strain happening. Queen b8, nasty little move from uh, d blue, uh, attacking this pawn on b2. Gary's got to decide where to put this bishop. Bishop a4, c5 played. Well, after c5, um, yeah, queen takes c5 is possible, but then uh, queen takes b2. So what Gary did was uh, Gary tried to improve that with uh, bishop c6, the idea being that we're threatening queen takes c5 now and then d5 will be hanging. So, um, well, yeah. <laughs> um, d blue threw in a nice little curveball here with c4, the idea being that after rook takes c4, um, now there's no longer rook e1 um, to deal with rook d1 check. So we've got a discovered attack with a knight and then a potentially uh, horrific check on the back rank. Um, not easy to make uh, something of it there. Um, knight c3 was one idea, uh, but then we go bishop f3. Knight d1, queen e1, knight b2, rook c2, knight d3. We can even play queen takes a5 in, uh, in this position because uh, the queen's attacking the rook. So if you go queen b1, I go king h2 like that. Um, so, 
yeah, you're just about hanging on there. And uh, if knight b4, which is what d blue played, um, again bishop f3, knight d3. Um, again, we're going to pick up the uh, the b2 pawn here. I mean, as you can see, you know, in principle, the engines are just saying, yeah, you know, it's 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 equal, it's equal, no worries. But um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, from a human perspective, um, very easy to make a mistake there. So Gary went over to um, to h4, and then uh, queen takes b2 happened. Um, yeah, yes, Seron suggested knight takes b2. Um, but again, something like rook d4 is, you know, fairly sensible for white there. I think, um, yeah, I think I prefer queen takes b2 there. So after queen takes b2, we got uh, queen g3, and then queen takes a3 here. And this, maybe queen a3 was kind of the move that made things um, a little bit too easy for Gary somehow. Yeah, so somehow actually Gary's got himself quite nicely organised here, because, you know, rook c7 is going to attack g7, and... Uh, uh, yeah, not going to be easy to do anything about that. Yeah, what um, what uh, uh, Deep Blue did was Queen A3, but then Rook C7, Queen F8, and Rook A7, and it was quite hard to uh, uh, to defend that pawn on A5. Well, quite hard, absolutely impossible, in fact. So Knight E5 was played, Rook A5, and then you're starting to feel as uh, as wide that you're uh, um, you're starting to to get close to the sanctuary of uh, of a clear draw you know which is obviously nice and also Gary had made move 41 there with not very much time to spare so uh, that gave him a little bit of uh, of time there um yeah what uh, deep blue did was play uh, queen f7 in this position and um you know this gave um uh, Gary the possibility yeah the engine say it's not necessary they also say it's maybe not even the best move but actually, rook takes c5, takes and queen takes. Now minus 0.31 according to the engines. But this was probably the clearest way that Gary could have uh, made a draw simply. Um, you know, instead of, uh, uh, you know, trying to hold on and um, and uh, maybe having uh, deep blue squeezing with this powerful knight on e5, you just get rid of it and just try and, um, uh, and, and just, you know, survive this position with, uh, with uh, um, all the pawns on one side and... Uh, um, a pawn for the minor piece so um, yeah rook e8 was played queen f4 and queen f6 also made things maybe a little bit easy for for Gary because it gives him this uh, obvious move bishop h5 um, yeah the, one of the commentators said that uh, Gary was so tired and concerned about his position that his hand visibly shook when he made this move well I think here the, 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 the shaking was about relief and uh, all of that once the bishop gets to g6 nothing much can really go wrong for uh, for him so rook f8 bishop g6 queen c7 queen d4 king h2 rook a8 bishop h5 queen f6 bishop g6 rook g8 and a draw was agreed so um yeah i mean a very interesting game there i thought uh, you know it was balanced all the way through really um i think that uh, the gary had um, um a decent opportunity for an advantage uh, back on move um, uh, 16 with um, uh, this move uh, um, bishop takes h6 here um, which would have required uh, yeah just that that vision to see that uh, after here you know black's completely powerless despite being uh, um, a piece up but that would have given him a pretty nice position after bishop b3 actually uh, deep blue was was never really in trouble and uh, indeed you know um when you uh, you saw this position, I think you know Gary did very well to uh, to hold the draw there because um, I think with that open king and uh, yeah weak dark squares b2 pawn a little bit loose would have been very very easy to um, uh, yeah you know to um, uh, to uh, to mess that up somehow. Um, but you know looking at how the match was um, was going there it um, uh, you sort of felt at this stage well you know deep blues kind of feels like it's it's on top somehow you know it's um, it's uh, it's one one game already it's um, uh, okay the, the white openings aren't great but uh, with black here seems to be doing pretty well you know um, uh, not at all clear who's going to win this match but somehow this match was going to turn on its head in the very next game so we'll have a look at that one in the next video